Welcome back to Literosity. In this episode, we're going to look at some new teaching techniques throughout the district. We go to Countryside High School where these teachers take team teaching to a whole new level. So today, uh, we have the teachers that are here, there's two teachers and a support facilitator. Um, the two teachers that are here, Ms. Carmichael and Mr. Creasy, both teach English 2. So this is an English 2 lesson that is leading up to our right score test. We have a right score testing next week. So kind of in preparation to this big assessment, um, and as, as you're probably aware, there's two types of essays that are on the FSA, either an informational or an argumentative essay. So this next right score administration, there is an argumentative essay coming up. So our, our teachers are prepping our students for that purpose. How many of you plan your writing? Raise your hand if you plan your writing. Okay. So do you see why we need to do this today? Because honestly, the expectation is, is if you have to plan your writing, whether you're planning for FSA, you're planning to write something else later on when you're going to college or you're going to get a job, because you will have to write okay. an essay. There are two classrooms here um, with a support facilitator present as well. So the two teachers collaborate very, very often with the support facilitator. The support facilitator, Ms. Kutar, uh, supports both of the teachers and she primarily does English all day long. So she's very, very familiar with the two teachers and the, and the students as well. So they've done a lot of planning together. They plan, I think, every Wednesday for a couple hours after school on their own time, uh, just because that's what's best for their students. They're so we ended up kind of combining our resources. Um, the, the two wonderful teachers that I work with, they have different talents. I, you know, we all bring something different to the table. So we're dedicated, so we, we set time aside beside time that we normally do with our own PLC to work together towards our goal, which it's, you know, we ha they have to pass the FSA. So our motto is kind of like the F let's get the FSA out of the way because it's 10th grade. You don't want to have to do that in 11th and 12th grade. So we all have that kind of percept, you know, that is our group combined goal. Well, you know, they're all 10th graders. They all have the same needs. They all need to be engaged. They all need to be um, challenged, and they and they need to interact with each other and the text. So, we figured if we brought them both all together, they can see that they're not alone. That what we're what I'm doing in my class is not in isolation from what Ms. DeCreasy is doing in her class. So they can see that they're not alone. That we're all doing this. All tenth graders doing this together. So it kind of creates unity, not only amongst um, the teachers but amongst the students. They can support each other. It was just a great collaboration with students, with teachers. Um, they, their voice was heard from all different perspectives and just to be able to see that it's okay if they struggle constantly. Um, it's okay if they struggle. It's okay if they show their strength. It's, it's all about learning here. And what we did was we combined the different students with um, right score data. So where they fell in cycle one, we kind of grouped them where we felt like they would have like it, like needs a little bit more support or help and also students getting together to get to know each other better from different classes different backgrounds and students that might not you know be as able to like come out and volunteer answers and work hard or right. run try to can't catch the ball so all right Jarrell, let's let's, let's, to get a let's give another so hold on right. 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 give her a chance to talk now her turn all right it's the same thing use you're a rebuttal you're use competing a rebuttal. against so, other so football teams. and cheerleading the same thing it's different, but it's still a sport. How is it different? How is it exactly different? How is it different? Well, I think it kind of helped that I had an athlete and a cheerleader, and, and it happened to be that they were talking about whether um, cheerleading was a sport. That was the argument. And one of the things that I'm trying to tell the students um, in their FSA writing is that we need to hear their voice. We need their words. We don't get hit. We don't. No, y'all don't. Y'all don't get hit. Y'all don't get. Y'all don't get. Y'all don't get hit. Like y'all think y'all do. Y'all get. Y'all get injured week. Have you ever had a concussion? Like our students come with information, and I don't want them to feel limited to reading the text and generating their ideas based on somebody else. So in order to make them creative thinking thinkers, it was easier for me to get spark their interest by something that they would be passionate about. And now they can see that their thinking can be valued in their writing. It's a heated subject, I, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I believe that's why I hope it's writing because it really gets your brain thinking to the limit to where like, okay, you know, don't get me wrong, she or whoever else feel the need to think the opposite side can think that, but it's more so of like, okay, what do I think? What do I know? 
what do what do what do I what do I know about it exactly? Like, anybody could be like, oh yeah, that's competitive. Anybody can say that, but what do you truly know about it? You know, it actually gets your brain running and thinking about like the deeper meaning of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just I it's gonna help me a lot because I say it just helps me think deeper. And I get just to see a whole lot of more passageways and more things I can use and say or come up with you know, than what the article, what everybody else is just giving me, you know, because it's my own train of thought. This is planning with a purpose before you read. Look at how much information you already have as experts. So in order to get an idea of how the students, whether they feel conf confident with what they learn today, our, our learning objective, so we usually give a sticker and we ask the student to rate themselves. How do they feel? Do they feel as though they got it? They got this, this was good, they learned something. I'm a little bit, you know, I'm not really sure, but I, I, I'm getting there, and this is, I, I'm a little bit lost, and I need a little bit of support. And what we had done, actually, was used, we used the different um, colors to, for each group, so that we could tell where maybe our um, area of need might be. But it looks like it was pretty uh, well distributed here between these two. I believe that it, it gives them the confidence to show that their opinion matters. You know, um, because I think a lot of them are very shy in the classroom, but now that they were having this discussion with their partners, with their groups, they are, you know, their, their point, their ideas do matter. I really think, you know what, I, th I thought that students that I was very surprised that may have, you know, attendance may be an issue or behavior concerns, some of them amazed me. They were able to like participate. They were really proud of themselves. Um, I saw students say to me, or, why can't we do this more often? Like, this is great. Like, this is a good idea. Like, they walked out of here feeling proud. Can I ask you how Earlier this year, we had the great fortune of having noted classroom instructor, Mr. Bill Madigan, talk to some of our teachers. Let's take a look. and difficult and stick with it, those cells just kind of get, they just fade away. So you can have actually more brain cells as you grow. Einstein, his left parietal lobe was gigantic. If you ever see his brain, a photograph, this side looks lopsided. It's because he did so much math so long. It grew that thing, okay? So you can actually make, by study and hard work, you can be more dense. <laughs> so this is my essential question. This is what I'm gonna try to answer in this uh, interaction with you guys. You're going to be part of it. Uh, what are and how can I create positive attachment-based developmental relationships? A question I want you to think of. When did you ever have a negative experience with a teacher or educational leader? And I want you to consider when you were in school. The next question I want you to trouble over is, why did you do better with teachers you loved or felt connected to? What, why? Don't just go, oh, it felt good. That's big, by the way. But what else? What else did they do? One of the things I wanted to do is experience what I'm about to teach them. That way, they're more receptive to whatever the research is. Too many people start out, here's the research I'm going to tell you. And the people are not in a place where it really kind of sinks in or they can make it their own. When you ask them their own personal experience, and that experience has some emotive elements to it, when they listen to the research that I show after they, they discuss their own lives, then they actually access and really take part in that research. And if you'd seen them, like you can see it on their faces, they're going, yeah, yeah. They're really, the engagement and the attachment they have to the research is much more amplified when they start out with their own personal experience related to it first. In the center of our brain, this is connected to the amygdala and the eyes, it, we basically are assessing someone the minute we meet them. And we get an overall no or yes. I'm, le I'm leaning in or I'm going to back away from this person. It ex especially happens with a singular authority figure, like a police officer, a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, a parent. Okay, And it's accentuated, like the volume gets turned up if the, the viewer, the kid, has gone through a lot of trauma because his amygdalas are larger and they're more reactive, okay? So this happens all the time, moment to moment. And something you need to know, teenagers have what's called a uh, very polar, uh, it's because of the hormones in their body, they have a polar understanding of your opinion of them. They think you love them or you hate them. 
There's not a lot of in between. And the research on that is if you do like, like and I've had kids, oh, you hate me, Mr. Man. I go, why? I said, well, you made that face. <laughs> I, it only takes one time with a kid who's insecure or gone through something. And uh, it apparently it takes four attempts to reconnect, to kind of erase that. So it's a hard job. I know, I know. Self-worth does not come generated from within. It's only from one person or an another couple people. And it, it can be a short period of time, but it ha the only place that you get a sense that you're a worthwhile being is from others, not from inside, okay? So if children don't feel cared for by others, they won't care enough about themselves to struggle and learn. <laughs> All right, so most important slide. You could sleep after this slide. Don't, but just, this is it. These are slices of prefrontal cortex of three individuals. These two on the ends are identical twins with the same genes. So the idea, you were probably taught genes express and that's who you are and your twin, the same thing. No, it depends on the environment. This child was sent to uh, foster care where there was a lot of food insecurity. The dad would rage at least three times a day and the mother was completely withdrawn. So this kid was on alert all the time for patterns of when my dad gonna scream, can I protect my mom, can I hide? And so all the energy and blood is going to the center part of the brain, the, the reptilian brain, the primitive brain. And so no blood is going up here to adulthood. This is adulthood right here, okay? Nothing going there. So when this child is in your class and they drop a pencil and you go, hey, Bobby, pick that up. You, Mr. Madigan, this place, and punch John and run out of the classroom. <laughs> this kid, the brother, does, drops the pencil. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Madigan. <laughs> this kid can navigate really complicated reality much better than this kid. Right? They're identical. And the issue is the environment they're in either helps express those genes that are in the brain or not express them. When a child is in a threatening environment, their brain doesn't grow properly. Their genes could be the same as Einstein, but unless they are treated well, they have food, they are not threatened, and unless they're challenged, like their parents limit and challenge them, they will not grow a, a fully adult brain until that environment, they actually fall into an environment like that. When we come back, we meet an author who's helping our middle school Spanish students get excited about learning. Literosity returns in a moment. <laughs>